Have you ever heard anybody say, oh, they're just a thorn in my flesh? Now, it's a, it's a phrase which, which is used to indicate a situation or a person that is bringing trouble into your life. I'm going to give you two scriptures. One is the Old Testament, one is the New, that deal with the thorn in the flesh. And I'm going to explain to you why God sometimes allows certain people to create problems for you or he allows what we would call a thorn in your life. You might be surprised. So just for the next few moments, give me your time. This is a good mini teaching that will help a lot of you that feel like you're going through something that you just don't really understand. And it's really provoking you. In Numbers chapter 35 and verse 55, this is what the Lord said to Israel. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you have let remain of them shall uh, those which you uh, have let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land in which you dwell. Now, Israel came from Egypt into the promised land under Joshua. There were 31 Canaanite cities that they were to conquer. They became weary of fighting, which many of you have as well. So they allowed seven ites. You had, you know, you had, you had Moabites, Canaanites, Amorites, and Horites, and all these other ites, okay? And they were to smite the ites, but instead they allowed the ites to remain in the land. So the Lord said to them, because you've allowed them to remain down the road, there's going, they're going to become a thorn in your flesh. Now we would say today, a pain in, in the neck or just a pain in, in other places that I'm not talking about here. So what God eventually said to Israel is this. Now, because you didn't deal with your issue and you did not drab out the thing I told you to remove from your life, it is going to be a thorn to you. Now, listen to me carefully. God will never defeat what you permit. And let me say it again. God will never defeat what you permit. So if you per permit people in your life that should not be there, He's not going to defeat the situation until you remove the people. If you have a situation in your life that is creating great stress for you, but you don't remove it, then you can pray all you wish. But if the Lord has spoke to you to get that situation altered and here's how to do it, but you refuse to do it, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be a thorn in your life, maybe in your mind, maybe in your heart, maybe in your spirit, but we would call this a thorn in the flesh. Now, this is what the Lord said. He said, I'm going to allow the situations to be there. Now he's speaking to ancient Israel here. I may prove Israel whether they shall keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out. And in other words, what they permitted, God said, okay, you're going to have to deal with it. Neither he delivered them unto the hands of Joshua. So in other words, what they permitted was the seven ites to exist so God said, because you're permitting it, I'm not going to drive them out for you. In other words, I'm not going to get rid of the problem, even though you don't think it's going to be a problem that you're enjoying. You know, people talk about all the time that they have something in their life that's a hidden sin or a weakness. But if they don't get rid of it or don't make the attempt, then you tie the hands of God in your life from doing that for you when you're willing to put up with it. That's what I'm trying to say here. All right. So God said, I'm going to prove you with those enemies that are surrounding you. The word prove in Hebrew means to test, to assay like gold that is put in the fire. And one of the things that happened, just so you'll know, now we're going to go to the New Testament verse, but one of the things that happened with ancient Israel was the idols of those seven nations began to infiltrate and form idolatry in the hearts of the Israelites and judgments followed the nation later because of that. So those nations became a thorn in their sides the way the Lord predicted they would. Now, the greatest example in the scripture of a thorn in the flesh is Paul, is Paul where he said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 8, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. And that Greek word messenger there is an angel of Satan to buffet me. And that means to clip on the ear. I get up, I get knocked down, I get up, I get knocked down, I get up, I get knocked down. Lest I should be exalted above measure. So Paul had an actual thorn in the flesh. Now, I'm not going to go into all the theological details of the three theories that people think the thorn could be. The problem was there was something that was hindering him. Now, watch carefully. But when he asked God to remove it, God said, no, I'm going to allow it to stay. 
And we do know that part of that thorn, if you go to chapter uh, 2 Corinthians 11, are 22 things that Paul had to deal with that were caused by people. All kinds of shipwrecked and stoned and left for dead and beaten with rods and all this crazy stuff the man dealt with. So his trouble often came through people. Your trouble often comes through people. So you have to watch who you surround yourself with. You have to watch who you allow in the inner circle. You have to watch who you tell your personal information, your secrets to, because they could eventually turn it into a thorn in your flesh. So what Paul said was, when I prayed for God to let it leave me, God spoke to me and said, Paul, my grace, and that word charis, grace means favor and grace, is sufficient for you and my strength will be made perfect when you feel weak. So the Lord was simply saying to him, I could take this away from you, but instead I'm going to give you grace to overcome every obstacle. You're going to be shipwrecked, but you're not going to drown. You're going to be bitten by a snake, but it's not going to kill you. You're going to be stoned in Lystra and left for dead, but I'm going to raise you up and let you go preach. So if, if you feel like that you're dealing with something that is a thorn, then look around you to see is a person or a circumstance or something I'm doing creating this thorn in my flesh or this problem I'm battling with? If so, you can change that. There are things you can change. But if you feel like it's a spiritual power, some type of a spirit that you're dealing with, ask God to give you the grace and the favor to deal with it and overcome it. Paul prayed three times that the thorn would leave and God said, my grace will be greater than the thorn. Let me say that again. My grace, God says, is going to be greater than the thorn that is in your life. So I've had thorns in my day. Why do you have a thorn? Because it keeps you in prayer. It keeps you depending on God and it keeps you always anticipating the victory. When you deal with thorns, I'm telling you, it'll keep you on your knees. It'll keep you depending on God and it'll keep you looking forward to the day that God is going to bring you out and God is going to uh, give you the victory. So folks, in order to be exalted in the things of God, in order to be promoted, that's a better word uh, to use, but in order to be promoted, you have to be proven. You have to be proven before you're promoted. And when you pass the test of being proven, you may still struggle with thorns in your life. And sometimes it's a weakness of your flesh or a weakness of the enemy. But God's grace is going to be sufficient for you. And that's my encouraging word for you today. So I hope that this little mini message has helped you. Please give it a thumbs up because it's a word from the Lord. And that's part of what we do. We give you instruction in history, biblical history things from Israel and prophecy, all these wonderful things that uh, we are able to present to you. We're thankful for it. Now, we always have something special added to the message that you might want to get. So please watch this. Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Greetings, everyone. This is Perry Stone, and I have a great announcement for you. I'm now making available to each of you the International Prophetic Summit, the greatest summit I was ever able to participate in. These are available on CD and DVD albums. There are 11 messages in all by myself, Bill Cloud, Mark Biltz, and also Joel Richardson. Let me just give you the titles you're going to hear. Is the seven sealed book now being opened? The parable of the fig tree and what it means for America. What would Jesus do during this present civil war? A biblical response to aliens and UFOs. I preached a message called the Green New Deal and its economic impact on your family another great message that was preached. A word for America from the prophecy of Habakkuk. Another message is called, What Time Is It? Bill Clout stunned the audience with a message called, Beware the Abab Rav. I preached a message called, Answering Tough Apocalyptic Questions That No One Is Answering. Mark Biltz came back and preached a message called, Jeremiah is a Prophet for Our Day. I closed the conference out with this message, Should You Prepare for a Pillar Transition? Now I wanna say something to you. It is a right now word. They are prophetic. They answer questions. And these are the unedited versions of the message. Now listen to me. On the Manifest Telecast, you only get about 20 to 21 minutes of a message. I still have another 40 minutes to preach. Not only that, but we never show the speaker's messages. And sometimes some of the information they share is for certain at-home ears only. It really would be rejected if it was put on social media. So I'm going to tell you how to get this series. If you want to get the CD album, the number is 21PS CD, and it's for $65 or more donation. 
If you would like to get the DVDs, and can I suggest to you to get the DVDs because especially with Mark Biltz, they have PowerPoint pictures. I show you pictures in my messages and people really seem to enjoy that. But the DVDs are offer number 21 PS DVD for $95. Now here's how you order. You can call toll free 1-888-21-BREAD, order that way. Or you can contact perrystone.org on the internet, log on and order online. Or just send us a check to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now remember this, that those checks and those orders go 100% to the Voice of Evangelism Ministry to help keep the Manifest program on the air. Now we're living in the greatest prophetic times that there has ever been. There is a clash between two kingdoms taking place. You are only arming yourself properly if you are armed with revelation knowledge and the truth of God's Word. May I encourage you, call, go online, or write me right now. God bless you.